again. This is Dr. Kenneth Niles coming into your space another Monday evening. And I say Monday evening because I know that's what you may have been having over the last three months. And it's a joy to be in your space uh, another time as we head down to the end of this great 2022. Would you believe it's already December? And with all the rain that Trinidad and Tobago has been having, it, we got so chilly, we said, wow, are we having a, a pre-winter experience? <laughs> now, chilly, of course, is like 20 to 22 degrees Celsius. But nevertheless, I know some of you are in the cold, getting down to minuses, and some of you in the hot, getting up to, you know, to the 80s and 90s. So there's diversity of experiences in this time of year, the weather. And then some of us may be shopping, going helter skeltering, trying to accommodate gift giving and receiving and the baking and the celebration of the Yuletide festival. But nevertheless, all of that again can create its own stressors as we head down to that weekend. The stressors of money and lack thereof or the stresses of who to give, who behaved well, who didn't behave, the stresses of what we could plan and the menu that may be available. You know, there are, there are so many things that we could look at. But we all come down to that one thing about culture. How do we realize the context of culture and how do we see culture in that context of those two words that we have been looking at, mental health? Yes, by the time we reach to the January, to January, we realize that some of us are really depressed because now we have no money. Now we are being called for rents and mortgages and other needs and it's all gone into the celebrative festival and uh, all the things you'd have bought and all the things you would have experienced and the drinks and the food and wow. So therefore, there is that concept that we need to look at. And how do we even our preparation? Look at that. So I, I wanted today to look at this whole thing about community and family concepts. How do we work that? And this is the way we have done it. This is the way I do it because Granny did it that way. And so that I must have all these things. I'm, I must do all those things. Why? Do I need to? Because it's culture, because it, it's part of who I am. And I, and, I, and I can't get out of that. Now, remember, I am not talking today about the youth child's experience. I'm talking about mental health. I'm using that as a platform to show how very subtly we can be drawn into a space or a, a reality that we need help of. And so, how do I continue to find that help? within this cultural base, where I am showing myself that I must identify with these dynamics so that I can feel alive, I can feel that I belong. It's a season to be jolly, so jolly. Yes, it's a season to be jolly, but yet to get to the jolly, I have to fight for the jolly. I have to press through the budgets and I press through the needs and the wants and the cries here. I have to press through the fact that I may not have and for some of us, we, we have to press through circumstances of loss and grief and illnesses. And all these factors are important for us as we create that dynamic of how we are existing and working out our future, how we are defining where we are going. One of the things that is important for us to see is how do we interpret this kind of madness, this kind of experience within a family and not be absorbed? How do we realize that, that I can get help or I can have support that is going to can help me to work out these issues? Now, one of the things about it is that we are pressed, of course, with what we think our relatives would say, especially when we have grandparents. Uh, aunts and uncles. Uh, we are we are defining uh, context of a. Hey, what will they say? 
how were they not? Well, we look at the whole issue of how we are working up this contest of the, the way, way, way back. Festivals are important. You know, and so that when I come to this festival at this point in, uh, in this month, uh, how do I escape that? Can I? When I put a parallel, maybe, in terms of other festivals, whether it's a religious festival or, or educational one, or like during this, uh, just sorry, the, the, the month gone by, a couple of weeks ago, we would have had, uh, was it cancer? And then we had International Day of Men. Uh, there are all these things coming up, and you know, going all the way through the, during the year. How do I adapt to all these things and yet to be functional? And those things are really important to define the issue of my exposure versus stigmatism. How am I going to be stigmatized if I don't? If I am exposed, am I going to be overexposed? Or am I going to be pressed into a space where I, I, I can't seem to function? How do I readily participate and be normal. You like that? Uh, I, I can see so you smiling. I'm actually using the word normal. But my normal hair <coughs> is not the normal of the cliché. Uh, the normal hair being a balanced, hardy condition that allows me to participate uh, cognitively, orderly, within a space. Not encouraging danger, but finding myself in a, what is considered a very harmless controlled environment. That's what we want. That's what we're looking for. We, we want to have the well-bred, you know, concept of how we behave. And now, you know, I'm invited, you give. Uh, there are these decencies, as we say, that we have to learn to reflect. And uh, of course, you want to be somebody. You don't want to be a nobody around now. You don't want to be nobody any time of the year. So whether it's a wedding, whether it's a family life, whether it's a, a religious festival that you go through, like Easter. Uh, we, we want to make sure that within our space that we are catering for that enjoyment, but it also we are catering for that identity of self. And, and that is where we have to now look at that, those two words, mental health. Because if I cannot find the means to establish me, to be somebody, to be quote unquote, may I use that word now, normal or balanced. How do I continue peaceably? How do I continue as if I have some manners or if I if I well bred, you know? How do I? And when I have that kind of press, when I have that kind of resistance, I now feel that I can't make it. And that is what I need to realize that I have to overcome the stigmas that are attached to me because I may see myself on the other side of the spectrum, not being able to accommodate people's needs out of my own. So I, if I can't provide the harm, am I going to invite? If I can't provide gifts, am I going to receive? So that we, we find ourselves with certain concepts in terms of what we are calling abnormalities, what we are calling the fact that uh, those things that are not worthy of acknowledgement, worthy of commendations. And I see myself being in a place where I, 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 there's, there may be some disgrace and fear, and of course that, that social exclusion, but I am not going to be at all identified within any other person's space because I'm not it. I, I trust that I am making some sense here today. I, I, don't, I hope you're following me because I, I wanted to see that this issue of mental health, as I said in a previous broadcast, is not just two words attached on a door or on a street side or, or on a label. It, it, it's a living experience of how we overcome daily. Anytime you get any kind of news, there's a press on your brain as to interpret the information and then respond. And that in itself is the issue of mental health. So when we come to the broader picture of looking at cultural dynamics and cultural icons, 
we, we realize that we are pressed on, on many sides and, and we are really come, come to that place where we are flustered and, and, and feeling those stresses and can't overcome them. So it is important for us to, to observe how we are working this out, how we are looking at those very important issues that are pressing us. It, it, it is classified, therefore, in context of my inability to work out fear or social exclusion or disgrace. How do I work out no harm or no curtains? How do I work out no gift buying? How do I work that out? Well, it's okay, um, you, you're afraid to go, you have, don't want to invite, nobody should come by you because you have nothing. So we have all this kind of issues that we are going about. And I want to know, by the way, mental health is not an illness, by the way. It is not an illness. It is, it is a very, uh, <clears throat> it's not an organic disease, which is physical. No, it is, a, it is a, not a disease. It is an experience or that's a life, that's life. It's life that's where we cannot overcome these external pressures that become internal. Yes, yes, it starts out there. It starts out not seeing the ham. So I take that inside and say, I don't have ham. We don't take it inside and say, how could I get ham? <laughs> it's how can I? And then I have no ham. Then when I do say I can, how could I get it? It's all about money. And then I am in a whole different paradigm of wondering how do I work? It's important for me, therefore, to examine the sociological context that uh, I think that is important for my continuous, continuum. Sorry. How do I go on looking at that socio sociological frame? I have a family. I have relatives, friends, neighbors. Am I in a space where I can integrate or better word, relate, just relate, before we integrate. Can I relate to them and share my position truthfully? Can I say, when we are celebrating Christmas, do remember me because I right now do not have. Or could I decide that I am so joined or so related that I could turn up or they could turn up and they ought to understand, <laughs> ought to understand my position and not judge me or have any negative implications in terms of how we relate. Can I work that? Am I able to identify these categories and say, okay, we can work that. How good am I with my neighbor? What does the word friend need to mean to me? If that's a friend, therefore I do not need to have that kind of frustration because a friend will understand and engage me in what they have and we all will have together. There's economic instabilities that creates its own discrimination. I don't have whether it's a job, whether it's a money in the bank, I, I just don't have. How, how do I work out evil political bias? Yes, political bias. Because you see, we can have the stressors because when we go to the marketplace or go to the grocery store, I should say grocery store for the foreigners, because of the politics, the prices are high. I can't buy. It's too expensive. So I, I don't blame just the farmers. I blame the whole political regime because they're the ones influencing the indicators of commerce. So those indices that are going up and down because of GDPs, because of population expansion, because of agricultural and non-agricultural interchange, and food securities, et cetera, et cetera, I cannot afford to buy. That's politi political. So I, I, I want to see how do I look at what I can do for myself.
Why can't I plant a garden? Why can't I share? Why can't I be shared with? How do I work that? And so that it's important for me to observe the educational inequity also. If I maybe had a better education, I would have get a better job. So therefore, in, in the very present time of my lack, or the very present time of a stressor, whether environmental or, or, or whether it's physical, or whether it's social, I, I, I could blame my lack of educational knowledge, like educational experiences, because I could blame and say, if I was brighter, if I had a, I'd have a better job, I would be certified, I can do. But let me encourage you, there are plenty, and I use the word plenty. I could say there's a vast, a very large percentage of persons who are educated and don't have jobs. So it's not about the education. It's about the ability to engage and to find con your own content month. Content month. Not just the content, but the contentment and the satisfaction of what you have. It's also to realize that because all that I've said, you can see yourself with cultural inadequacies. I can't fit in because of all these lacks. Friends, fans, where are they? Money, I don't have. Education, I didn't go do well. You know, politics, oh, the price is too high. A access is not there. Woo! By the time I go through that, that list, I am flabbergasted, you know? I, you know, you know, it's like, wow. I'm under the table, I, under the, the weather, I just can't breathe because I am flat out. Because, and now, I can't really say I belong. There is no identity. So look, I have this fall back, or rather, I have this fall into, <laughs> you know, that, that agony, that distress. So look, we have to learn to overcome that and understand that we can work that out very decently, decently by appreciating where I'm at in terms of my sociological phrase, I have people with my where is not a location. My where here is my identifying with, my connectivity with. I am connected. I have friends. I have family. My economic position, we can share. I am not to be cons to consider myself poor and depraved because I do have people around me that can share that in. I don't. I can change my diet, I can change my budget to facilitate the amount of money I have to barter goods. And I could still be satisfied at the end of the day or within this celebrative time or any celebrative time. I, I have to realize that it's important for me to not blame my education, but to find means of continual or continuous education. And there are means today especially with a virtual platform. You can find something out there. And therefore, I can find my cultural position where I can say, yes, I am who I am. I belong. I am not thrown. I am not discarded. I identify and there's that integration. So I am removing, as it were, any stigma that is attached to me because it seems a or it is apparent that I cannot enjoy the season. Any season. You know, for some of us in some countries, we realize there are so many experiences in terms of seasons and celebrations, one after the other. And where I live, I think we have something every month or every other month to celebrate as a community, as a nation. And some people just don't because they can't, even down to things like Mother's Day and Father's Day. How do you work that? There's a lot of depression on those, those days. There's a lot of mental health issues on those days. Why? I, I don't have a father, mother, or I don't want to talk to my father, my mother, they beat me, they ill treat me. I, there's a lot, or oh, I lost all the babies, miscarriages, so I can't operate. There are so many issues we can find as we go along. But I want us to learn how to realign align, realign to align with our very present and to have that acceptance 
with contentment of how we do have capacities within us to go forward. I belong. There must be a relative or friend. If I could only find one of those categories, I am fine. There's money around amongst us. I can trust that. I don't, I can redo my diet. I can uh, overlook the lack. I can work out my environment. I can be content to go forward. I want to encourage you today to work out those stressors by understanding you are not stigmatized and you will not be. And don't stigmatize yourself. Don't put yourself in a category and say, pour me one, or oh, I don't know, or oh, you know how things. No, hold on. You have enough resources around you. Whether you have a clear concept of how to take bread and make it buttery and look at it and say, wow, what a beautiful sandwich. Eat without ham or turkey. Some of you may not even have vegetables, but there is something you could be content with. And I want to put that word here in terms of the mental health context as I end. We got to learn to be content and to understand that the frustrations of the public and the stigmas we don't want to have, we can have a worse stigma if we develop a disorder. That means a psychological disorder and become imbalanced. So let's keep our head on our shoulders. Let's keep our eyes in front of us and let's involve our own selves first into who we are, what we have and where we are going. And know for a surety that you are in a safe space where you are. So that tis the season really to be jolly. Tis the season not just to give, but to receive. Do have a good week and I'll see you again where you tune in on the following Monday. And we will have another blast about how we can be resilient in this time. And I repeat, it is the season to be jolly.